This theory video is about how to approach animating a, a scorpion in motion. So scorpion locomotion is really what we're, what we're interested in today. Uh, and uh, the place to begin, as always, is to check out live action reference. We want to know how scorpions move. So you should study their motion. Uh, YouTube, as always, is a great source of reference for this kind of thing. Um, and there's um, uh, a great website called www. Uh, keepvid.com that's keepvid k e e p v i d.com and you can use keepvid.com in order to download uh, youtube video and the great advantage of that is that you can then open the video up in quick time and step through it frame by frame so uh, if you're just playing black playing back youtube streaming from the web obviously you can't step through it but if you download it open it up in quick time and you can step through it frame by frame. So that way you can really analyze the motion um, in the uh, scorpion moving. So that's the place to begin. Next thing to do is to, um, uh, is to download the rig. Now, scorpions are... <laughs> it's a, uh, uh, it's, somebody asked me the other day, well, why are you animating scorpions? Well, I think they're cool. Um, they're, they're also reasonably simple to animate using a simple, straightforward formula. Uh, and if you watch the tutorial video, I'll show you exactly how to do it. And there's also a really nice free rig available. Uh, and it's at this uh, great website, 3dfiggins.com, and it was um, created by uh, Russ uh, Schwenkler, who did the uh, the modeling. And it's a really nice free rig, and it's very, uh, we're, as always, indebted to the people who provide us with this freeware. Um, uh, and um, uh, so go ahead and, and, and download the rig. Uh, it comes with a package of two other rigs as well, which we're not so interested in, but um, uh, it, it's a nice rig and it works very, very well. Uh, so here's the basic formula. This is taken from the Animator Survival Kit. I highly recommend you consult the pages at the back of the anim Animator Survival Kit on animating um, uh, arachnids, uh, because it's, that's basically what we're doing here. So essentially what you've got is the first set it, uh, are, are animating just like a normal two-legged walk. This leg is forward, that leg is back. Uh, where this screen right leg would be forward, the screen left leg would be back. So it's just like a normal two-legged walk. Um, the second pair of legs, the one behind, will be exactly the same as the front pair, only uh, counteracting them. So uh, what we'll be doing is a 16-frame cycle where these front, this front pair of legs is, 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 is taking a step every, um, uh, every eight frames. Uh, so all you have to do is copy those curves, paste them onto the second pair of legs, and then offset it by eight frames. That's the genius of this formula. Uh, it's basically the same animation curve, only offset. Again, I'll show you in the tutorial video how to do that. But the basic principle is that the second pair of legs counteracts the first set. The third set of legs are exactly the same as the first set. So all you have to do is copy the animation from the first set of legs onto the third set of legs, and basically you don't have to do anything. Um, fourth set of legs um, uh, will uh, mimic the second pair. Although I'm not sure, I think the scorpion may actually only have six legs, so um, uh, we may not have to worry about that. Here's the rig. Um, it's um, it's uh, Keel Figgins' is, is website. Uh, it does come with these two other rigs, as I said, but we're really just interested in the, um, in the scorpion. Uh, and it is a six-legged scorpion. Uh, if you could, as you can see, if you if we look at a, a real scorpion, it actually does have four sets of legs. But you know, whatever, uh, we're not interested in. We're not. We're less interested in, in technical accuracy here than in doing an interesting uh, performance. And there's plenty of other stuff to animate because you've got to deal with the pincers and also with the tail. So step one: the first thing you're going to do is set your timeline in Maya from one to seventeen, because it's a sixteen-frame cycle. Then you're going to turn on your infinity curves, and then animate the front. Uh, the left front leg, uh, that would be this one here, on a 16-frame cycle. So it's going forward and back on a 16-frame cycle. Uh, and then, so that would be frame one uh, would be your front left contact, then frame nine would be the leg going back in the back position, and then frame 17 would be the same as frame one. So it's going forward and back in an endless loop on the spot. Again, this is all set out in the tutorial video, but these are the principles that apply. Um, then you've got to add a breakdown at frame 13 where the leg rises up in the y-axis as it comes forward. And you should then, once you, once you do that, you should have a leg walking. So it's contact at frame one, going back at frame nine, 
uh, up at 13, contact at 17, and then you're back to one again. Back at frame nine, up at frame 13, contact at frame 17 or frame one. Once you get the one leg walking, then you just have to copy and paste it. Um, basically, um, uh, once you've once you've done your left leg, you just have to copy those curves onto the front right leg. Again, you've got to turn infinity curves on, and now you're going to slide all of those curves in the graph editor by eight frames. Uh, and as long as you've got your infinity curves turned on, you'll now find that these two legs will animate in opposition to each other. And that's the brilliance of this. Now all you've got to do is copy that animation onto set of legs number two. Uh, and um, uh, again, just offset it by eight frames. Set three, all you have to do is copy the animation from the front left leg onto the rear left leg. And you shouldn't have to do anything because these two legs are doing the same thing. Again, if you copy the animation from this front right leg onto the rear right leg, you shouldn't have to do anything because they're both doing the same thing. Uh, now, once you've done that, the next step is to add some body motion. Have a little body motion, have the, have the scorpion moving up and down. At frame one, you could have the body up a little bit, then at frame down, at frame five, have it go down. At frame nine, it goes up again. At frame 13, it goes down again. And at frame 17, it goes up again. And that's the same as frame one. So now you'll get a little up and down motion on the body. Then once you've done that, uh, now you've got, to, you've got to add some flexibility in the tail. And your basic formula is that when the body goes up, the tail wants to come down. At frame five, the body down, the tail should go up a little bit. Frame nine, the body comes back up a little bit. Frame goes down a little bit. This is in the rotation. Uh, uh, at frame 13, the body's down and the tail's going to go up a little bit. So basically the tail is counter animating the motion of the body. Now you're going to offset the various body parts, so the head, the abdomen, the feelers, so that they all counter animate the main motion of the body. It's all now about adding flexibility and, um, and overlapping action. Again, the details of this are all in the tutorial video. Once you've done that, you can bake out your curves. Uh, so all you have to do is, because we've been animating this scorpion walking on the spot, so you've just got to go to the, the main world control, or the main direction mover, and add a Z translation so that the scorpion is actually traveling along the ground. And once you've got the scorpion traveling along the ground and that working okay, you just have to bake your curves out. Um, and um, again, I'll show you how to do that in the tutorial video. But the point of baking out your curves is so that Maya now um, uh, ignores the infinity curves and it actually bakes out a keyframe on every uh, single frame or every two frames or what ask, whatever you ask it to do. And now you've got editable keyframes. That's the great thing about baking your curves is you can now edit them. So you can, uh, you know, you can then maybe add a little bit of a performance at the end. Maybe the scorpion comes to a halt. He kind of raises up his claws there. Maybe he gnashes his teeth. Um, you know, something cool, something scorpion-like, uh, something interesting. So that's the basics of animating a scorpion. As you can see, it's kind of a formula, but it's a formula that once you get the hang of it, isn't too difficult, or at least it's in theory, as long as you follow all the steps in the tutorial carefully, you should end up with a really nice piece of animation at a relatively low cost in terms of time and effort.